Uh up, Justin. How are you today? <laughs> hey, hey, Christian. I am doing great. Bone fish podcast. Merry Christmas to you now. Yeah, we're gonna do this the whole episode. <laughs> Ping ponging between your headphones. Just kidding. What's up, guys? It's Bonefish back at you. Uh, yeah, it's the podcast where me, Christian, and this guy, Justin, this guy, talk about this guy, psychedelic and experimental music of different sorts. Most commonly, though, the band Animal Collective and their music. And today, we are talking about. Maybe their most controversial album, Painting With. Oh, yeah. I was excited for this one. <laughs> this is where it gets interesting, guys. Yeah, so we, uh, we get into that album. We also are joined by a guest, the music quote-unquote critic, as he is self-described, Kyle Reed, who's a... YouTube streamer, Zoomer extraordinaire. A young YouTube maverick who... Uh, I just stumbled upon because he uh, he has a video called Introduction to the World's Weirdest Band. And it's about uh, our boys from Baltimore. Career. And I think the main reason why Animal Collective has stayed unique is the fact that they're just really, really weird. They just like to have fun and they make that very apparent in, in their music. They don't really like to keep things safe. They just kind of play around and see what sticks. You know, it's like cooking pasta. Hopefully your pasta is going to stick to the wall. If it does, that means it's ready to be released, you know? Their sound never gets old because they don't have a defined sound. They're just weird. <laughs> My first experience... But, uh, personally, yeah, he's he's got another another video where he like forces his dad to listen to strawberry jam it's pretty funny but uh he's super into to animal collective and he's also like 10 plus years younger than us justin so we thought it'd be cool to get his sort of zoomer perspective on this record he got into animal collective when he was like what was he 16 and like yeah just yeah. before covid Which wasn't or something. that long ago for him it sounds like um, he's 21 now so yeah, it was cool talking with him. He's very chill. And yeah, Painting With seems to be popular with younger Animal Collective fans, maybe, if we're being reductive. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we thought we'd get his thoughts. He's also a musician, and along with his YouTube videos, he makes music, so we chat about that a bit. Justin and I are going to do a little Painting With debrief on the other side of the interview, so stick around for that. But yeah, in the meantime, what do you say we hop to our chat with Kyle Reed? Sure. you then i'll kind of just fade into our interview but um cool but yeah we uh i've been loving your youtube channel man i stumbled upon it earlier this year uh and it, i think it was that that first video i watched was intro to the world's weirdest bands um, oh, where you do your kind of <laughs> animal collective breakdown that's one of my most uh controversial title and thumbnails calling animal collective like the world's weirdest band or whatever just like got me a lot of flack too. Sure. I was like, this guy, this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Like the old heads came after you, probably. Yeah, they're just they're just jealous of your uh, of your youth, I guess. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, we're uh, we're no strangers to getting flack from Animal Collective fans. I mean, we uh, <laughs> we do an Animal Collective podcast, and uh, yeah, it's yeah, an honor. Some, we get some funny Reddit responses when I try to promote our stuff on there from time to time. Oh but, yeah, I bet, I bet. But hey, it's, it's all it's an honor. We do it for the love of the game, you know. But um when did uh when did you get into the band, Kyle? I got into the band a few years ago. It was like 2019, 2018. It was my junior year of uh high school and um cool. I discovered them like late at night when I was like really high and I just kind of fell in love with Sung Tongs. That was my first experience with them. What a, what a wonderful way to encounter that band. Yeah. <laughs> did the algorithm guide you to them or how did you? It was the algorithm, yeah, the Spotify wow. algorithm. It led me to Winter's Love, 
And I was like so entranced by Winter's Love that I went into the rest of the album. And then I went, I listened to Kids on Holiday next and I just fell in love. Wow. Shout out Phil Eck for putting that in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So yeah, you're stoned like. 16 year old brain must have just been like it was wow. yeah it was crazy yeah <laughs> wow that's blown so away cool. it was unlike anything i've heard before ever yeah winner's love too like is a crazy first track to hear because it starts and then like two minutes in you know like a different song essentially starts yeah and like it's very uh yeah crazy so you didn't have any like friends turn you on because that was that's one of my questions i wanted to ask you is like as maybe you know the foremost zoomer fan of animal collective I'm curious what you think your like cohort, what your peers, how that how this band is viewed sort of amongst them. Yeah, I mean a lot of my friends don't listen to like any of the stuff that I listen to. I do have one friend who she's really influ she makes music and she's influenced by Animal Collective, but that's the only person like my age. Her name is Madison. She makes music under the name Matt XN. And uh, that's the only person my age that I know that is like into the band. And everyone else that I've, like, shown it to, they've, like, immediately, like, brushed it off and, like, just thought it was, like, nothing special. Hmm. So Interesting. Yeah, this band tends to do that. Um, yeah, you seem to have, like, pretty mature taste in music. I mean, I don't, I don't know how old you are. You said you were a sophomore I'm a, in high I'm school. I'm 21. Okay, so. Nice. Yeah, I know, I know you do yeah. lots of vids with your dad that are great. Uh, you have one where, like, I think you, you forced him to listen to, is it Strawberry Jam? Yeah, Strawberry Jam. Yeah, it's a great video. He, I think he digs like uh, Reverend Green, if I remember. He gets pretty into that one. But does he have like a pretty big involvement in like your sort of music taste, or how how was, was it all just uh, cultivated by the algorithm? <laughs> it is, yeah, it's pretty much the algorithm, honestly. <laughs> my um, my dad's taste and my taste are very different because he listens to a lot of country stuff, and I I don't really dive into that world too much. It's pretty much the algorithm. It was uh, it started with like bands like Modest Mouse and Car Seat Headrest, and I just kind of kept going deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole of yeah. developing my music taste. If you had Go to ahead. pick, what uh, what's your favorite Animal Collective album? This one I've been tossing around a lot because like I've been saying for the past few years that like Feels is like my favorite Animal Collective album, mm. but I think more recently I've been really liking Centipede Hurts a lot. Wow. Um, yeah, I feel like that one nice. has had a resurgence, or at least amongst fans have I think people have kind of liked Senate Peter Hurts more so than the critics. Whereas at first it was kind of like, what? Yeah. Because I've got I've got friends who love Senate Peter Hurts and I've got friends who love painting with. Like one of my friends, I mean, I'm in my mid thirties, he's he is as well, and his favorite album is Painting With which is incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, love your, love your animal collective content. You also make music as Alexander's radio experiment. That was dope, man. I listened to it before hopping on. That was cool. Yeah. Thank you. Dancy and trancy and nice. Yeah, uh, there's um, a lot more on the way coming. I got a lot of stuff that I made this year that's just, like kind of unfinished. So I'm kind of throwing together some like random compilation that I'll just put up on YouTube. And then I got like a full fledged album coming out next year. Sweet. Do you know Nicholas Jar's music? Like Against All Logic, yeah. like his dance. I love Against All Logic. Yeah. For music making, are you a are you Ableton guy or what's like your? I'm Ableton. Are you a gear guy? Or are you like samples guy? Like in the box kind of thing? I so. Before I started making music under Alexander's Radio Experiment, I'd release music under like my full name. And that's when I was more of like doing like guitar, bass, and drums. Like everything was like live recording. And mm -hmm. then I discovered like samples. And now everything I do is like all samples. Like this new album I have coming out next year is like probably 80% samples and like 20% like live instrumentation. So I, I used to Crazy. be really into like writing stuff on the guitar. I kind of got bored of it. But like discovering samples, there's like a whole new world out there of like how to recontextualize music into a different way. Yeah. You can do a lot more interesting things, I think, with uh, samples. Yeah, it's just it's choosing as your instrument uh, all of 
human recorded history. <laughs> so it's exactly, yeah. A wide palette for sure. That's cool. Well, bringing it back around to Animal Collective a little bit before we get into painting with, what do you think of Isn't It Now, the latest record? I actually just listened to it the first time a couple of days ago. So I still like need to listen to it more mm. to kind of develop a full flesh opinion. But I did like what I hear. I think, what's the, the super long one? The Defeat is the super yeah. long track, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one kind of loses me a little bit, but I think the rest of the album is pretty good. Mm. But I do need to listen to it more. Yeah, you do, because Defeat's amazing and you're wrong, so you need to listen <laughs> a little more. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Justin uh, isn't the hugest Defeat head either, but uh, but I've been riding riding for I it. I like it. It's, it's, it's grown on me. It's an odyssey. It's grown on me. It's an odyssey for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. Do you want to hop in? Should we hop into some painting with here? Yeah. So context for the bands, we have the uh, Meriwether Post Pavilion trio reuniting. Deacon, I believe, is finishing up Sleep Cycle uh, at this time, so wasn't involved. And yeah, so painting with is notable for being an animal collective record that was sort of an in-studio creation, you know, not kind of their typical route of touring, playing songs live, rehearsing them, rehearsing them, really writing them together as a band, and then just recording those. It was really sort of, it's kind of their most probably studio creation. Maybe we can start by talking about like how we encountered the album. I was, Justin and I both became fans when Meriwether Post Pavilion came out. Was super into that, was into Centipede Hurts, though to a lesser extent. By the time Painting With came out, for me, I was I was not really, I was a little tuned out of like the Animal Collective world for whatever reason. I mean, I was kind of tuned out of just like new music world. I was like, my first sort of like really busy internship, I was like commuting downtown and listening to a lot of music, but uh, this record wasn't really on my radar for whatever reason. I remember like Florida Dada coming out, being like, all right, and I didn't like buy it or anything. Um, but funnily enough, at the time, I was working at this radio show uh, downtown called The Dinner Party Download. From APM, this is The Dinner Party Download, your audio culture atlas. Subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And we had like uh, different actors and musicians come on and do like different segments. One of the segments we did, they like picked a soundtrack. And um, this one day, the the musician Lou Barlow came in, of all people, who was like, one of the founding Dinosaur Jr. guys. He's like the Dinosaur Jr. bassist. And he was in like Sebado. I realize this is getting really long, but um, <laughs> but I'll wrap it up. But anyway, he chose three songs for his like dinner party soundtrack. And one of his picks was Hocus Pocus. Hey, this is Christian, but later. Um, I actually was able to find that clip of Lou talking about Animal Collective on that show that I edited like six or seven years ago. That show has been canceled and that clip will probably never air again. And it's pretty funny and Lou does a good job talking about what makes this song cool. So I thought I'd just clip it really quickly here. So now it's time for my third song. There is a band I love, but I have a really hard time ever playing their music when anyone else is around because they elicit pretty extreme reactions in people. The band's Animal Collective. This song is called Hocus Pocus. I mean, Animal Collective are interesting because they're not a noise band, but a lot of their songs are so frenetic and so kind of crazed at their beginnings. You know, it's like people are like, get that off! <laughs> like, what is it? Hocus Pocus is a, a, a panda bear composition, panda bear being a member of the collective. So many ways. his songs they have these beautiful transitions in them and there's you're kind of like where is he going with this where is it and then this just nice melodic swell will come in and you go oh there it is (laughs) 
And it's a true hook, you know, and it's a hook that it just seems so intuitive and there is a real simplicity to it. And that was kind of like my route back into this record is like really digging Hocus Pocus and then kind of listening to this record again, kind of through that lens as opposed to like the Flora Dada kind of single singles lens. But, uh, but what about you, Justin? Uh, never fell out. Uh, yeah, was tuned, tuned right in to this album rollout. In fact, I drove four hours to Baltimore International Airport to hear this album played in the airport. Just kidding. I didn't do that. Uh, what <laughs> did they do that? Yeah, they played the first time this album was played was in, in an airport in Baltimore. Um, oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, that's how they rolled it out. Um, Sounds like it would sound like shit in an airport. <laughs> yeah, here in like, yeah, here in Florida, while like your flight's been delayed five hours, I'd probably <laughs> fucking kill myself. <laughs> um, so I, uh, you know how like you have like expectations for music? I don't know. I do. Like I, I kind of think about like, oh, you know, it'd be cool if a band did this, or I think a band is going to do this next. And sometimes I convince myself that they're going to do something or. Yeah. So with Animal Collective, I was actually kind of expecting them to do their kind of like laid back time skiffs adult album after Centipede Hurts. Mm. And and so when that didn't happen and I heard Flora Dada, I was like pretty, pretty surprised. I think my reaction as well was kind of like, okay, wow, they're making music for my like seven-year-old nephew like you know uh <laughs> um not in a bad way like you know and then yeah when the full album came out um i was like wow like yeah this this is totally not what i expected and yeah it kind of it, it kind of blew by me because like yeah there's short songs there's a lot going on but uh i also feel like this album's very much of kind of a time period like um I'd say like this part of the the tens, the twenty tens was very kind of like a, a time for music where everything was kind of there was you know a lot going on, kind of very clubby, very electronic, dancey, kind of maximalist. And I feel like this was the the tail end of that. And so I don't want to say I was burnt out on stuff like this, um, mm. but critically, I guess you know this is like where critics were like, no thanks, you know, and, and, and they didn't like this album, I guess we should say. So I didn't, didn't hate this album. I listened the shit out of it. This actually came out right when I moved to California, when I moved to LA, like the month I moved and I actually bought a ticket to see them at the Fonda in LA as a reason not to move back home. Almost. <laughs> I bought my ticket while I was in Connecticut. Sounds like it worked. I, I bought my ticket while <laughs> I was on the East coast still. That was my initial reaction. How about you, Kyle? What did you think of, or what do you think of painting with? Uh, initially, I don't think I really enjoyed it too much. Cause, so I got into Animal Collective, and it was, it was already out. And I was kind of avoiding it, uh-huh. I guess. Because I guess maybe avoiding it's not the right word. But like, because I, um, I was new into Animal Collective, so I was like kind of listening to like the the big four i guess you know, like mary weather sung tongues mm. strawberry jam and feels like i was mm. really into those and i kind of didn't really know where to go next i think i listened to campfire songs and i enjoyed it I and mean, then i listened to i don't know my exact journey but eventually i landed on a painting with and i didn't really like it the first time yeah i don't know i just i wasn't really expecting an album like that it just uh it seemed very it was kind of disorienting at first i think that's um, interesting because you really like Centipede Hurts, right? I do. Well, I, I, did, also I, I listened of... to Painting With before Centipede ah, Hurts. And, so okay. I, I actually didn't get really into Centipede Hurts until this year. Mm, okay, because that's, you know, um, that's another very disorientating maybe. one. Of, I feel like these two, Painting With and Centipede Hurts, are maybe among their most kind of in your face a lot going on records but um yeah which is interesting because yeah, sure. that's probably the one thing they overlap in right like they're so different basically in every other way but they are both mm. very like yeah kind of a uh, maximalist i guess yeah what, what what is it about this album i mean i can think of some things i, I think i think the songs are good they're it's catchy to me i think it's 
some of the production choices maybe um i think for me at first the the vocals were super super disorienting the yeah. way now i love the it but like the, the call and response with the, the hocketing yeah 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 like going back and forth like it was a it was a lot to listen to mm-hmm. i hear that and also i think the 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 synth tones they're very abrasive i think as well they're not like the typical sounds i think you would hear in these kind of more popular type songs you know the the scents are very very out there and abrasive i think yeah so there's this one synth they kind of go to again and again and again on this album which is this kind of like hollowed out sounding like squelchy yeah kind yeah. of like rising sound yeah it's like a modular that, synth right it sounds like there's a, i think it could be i mean it's it sounds a little bit more like pre steady to me or like yeah, it definitely is pretty uh, abrasive and is used a lot. I think that's where s- some of the criticism on this album I I don't really get, but the stuff I do get is where people say that this album is like a little bit one note. Like I can they see kind that. of yeah, like they use that synth a lot. The hocketing is really abundant. Which, by like, the way, those those two things that I said that put me off at first, I do really enjoy now. I I, I really hmm. like this album a lot now. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. interesting. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, because in your video you sort of defend it. You're like, I think the hate this album gets is pretty unfortunate. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's fun. I think it's a really fun album. I like. Mm-hmm. You can tell that they were just kind of having fun in the studio. I think, at least when I listen to it, like even some of the sample choices, they're just kind of just weird. Yeah. Like the vocal samples, like the 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 person talked about, like the the dinosaur, and like in Golden Gal with like the. No, she's upset because they changed the taste of Coke. It's just like just fun samples, and it's a yeah, very, very bright like, album. Direct samples, too. yeah. Like not like they're not like you know affected or they're pretty much just like lifted straight. Um, yeah, yeah. I said I think on a previous episode that this that painting with kind of feels like the first album where they're like, okay, this is our job now a little bit. Yeah, and like not uh, in a bad okay. way, like. You know, I mean, this is a band whose honesty is like in their music and, you know, it reflected their current life circumstances, you know, where they're like, all right, we should like meet up. Uh, I think they recorded it uh, at um, East West, uh, which is the Beach Boys studio for Pet Sounds and Smile. It's definitely their L.A. album. And it does feel a little bit like, yeah, like, all right, Mm -hmm. we're getting together. Slick. Like let's crank this out in a couple of weeks. <laughs> and again, I like yeah. all these things you could, you could say are like, when, you know, I mean, great music can happen in tighter constraints than that. But, but it does sort of feel like that. Like I think the hocketing, especially like, you know, for, for animal, animal collective fans who, who uh, heard, you know, Panda bear versus the grim reaper and, and boys Latin, which up to that point was really like sort of the first use of hocketing in their music. Like one of the reasons I think that track is so good and sticks out on that album is because like it's used so sparingly. Like even like you think of like Dirty Projectors who maybe you could say like popularized this method in like indie rock music. It's pretty sparse with them. And with Painting With, they just like cranked Hockett- the Hocketing knob. It's all like, over the place. All the way up to 10. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere, I think it's Noah who says this is sort of like their Ramones album. Like it's sort of very direct. It's about the songs. There's not these like crazy washed out passages or like transitional moments. It's kind of like straight in, guns blazing, and then like sort of straight out, which maybe also contributes to like it feeling like, all right, we're clocking into the morning. We're making yeah. a weird neo psych pop track. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> like, I do. Yeah, I do. I don't packing know. up shop. I do think Florida is like among the weirdest songs they've ever made. Weird because it's so basic. Um, and I was definitely like, wow, when I first heard that song. And it made me, it reminded me of um, Mike Love of the Beach Boys, like in the 80s when he was wearing a hat that said the Beach Boys, you know, like, (laughs) like we're at, we're kind of at this point with this band's music, you know, like, you know, Animal Collective, uh, the show or whatever. Uh, Like, yeah, like you're in a toy store or something, you know. See, I wanted to bring this up because I, you said earlier that you didn't really enjoy Florida, but I think that track is awesome. I think it's a great way to start off the album. Yeah. What? Yeah. Tell me more. I just because I don't know the the whole album kind of feels very 
sunny to me. Like it's kind of like a sunny pop album, and like that song is just like the perfect introduction to the sounds and the vibes that you're gonna get with the album. It's super upbeat. It gets me super excited. Yeah, I'm also it, it remind. I'm a big fan of uh, kind of bonkers, and it reminds me a lot of kind of bonkers as well. I like that song. I love yeah. kind of bonkers. I like dude. that song. That's, they should have. Yeah. That's one of yeah. my favorite Animal Collective songs of like their later kind of era. But yeah, but I great think song. I'm a little bit with Justin. I'm Flora Dada is a little tough for me. I like the like the B part, like the if you call it the bridge that's yeah. about bridges. It's like two um, Saturday morning cartoons for me. Okay. A little bit for me too. Like the chorus, like sample thing. I like picture a guy like slipping on a banana, like like flora, flora, flora. <laughs> like I picture it kind of like. Um, it is like yeah, and that's kind of how I feel about the singles on this album in general. Like Golden Gal too is also maybe lower oh, on the man. tier for me. I that's like like it. my like, favorite song on the album. It. Really? See, this is yeah. this is great. This is great. <laughs> um. So apparently Colin Stetson is on this track, plays saxophone oh, in this yeah. song, which is sort of funny. Like he rocks Colin Stetson, but he does like horror soundtracks. I thought it was random that he like ripped some sax for Florida. Dude, Florida, almost 12 million streams on Spotify. Like, well, that's really? the thing. Like, yeah. I mean, this album actually has like more streams than like, well, it has more streams than Time Skiffs, even though Time Skiffs is like the critically acclaimed album. Has more streams than Centipede Hurts. Um, yeah. But yeah, Florida, almost 12 million streams. Yeah, Florida probably got so many people into this band that yeah. otherwise. Well, I was going to say, that's interesting. Checked it out. I, think, I think for a lot of, um, you know, Animal Collective fans who might be in, you know, maybe like Kyle's age now, early 20s, when this album came out, you know, they were in high school, maybe middle school. And when I went and saw Animal Collective on this tour, it was in Orange County at the observatory. And there were a lot of, oh, wow. there were a lot of young kids, like middle school in tie dye. Like they're like, you know, it seemed like this was maybe even like their first concert or something. Like it was a lot of young kids, which really kind of jives with the vibe of, of painting with the kind of, yeah, just energetic, very, you know, I think spry album. What's, what's really good about getting into animal collective, like right now, as opposed to getting out, getting into the Anna Collective when they're like putting out, you know, banger after banger, is that right now, like when I got into Anna Collective a few years ago, I had no expectation for each album. It was just like, I just know each album is going to have a different vibe. Mm. So it's like, I didn't have, there was like nothing to live up to. Where like now, like when Isn't It Now comes out or it came out, I have some sort of expectation for the band, you know, because Time Skips was really good. So it's like, I first heard Defeat, and I was like, I'm not really sure if I'm super into this. Interesting. And it's like, and it's more of an event when an album comes out versus when I'm just listening to Painting With for the first time. If I don't like it, that's fine. I'll just go listen to Centipede Hurts next. Yeah. And have to like come back to it later. Yeah, expectation is a funny thing. Yeah, so, yeah, so like I think for a lot of fans, maybe a lot of younger fans, their favorite album is like painting with probably. I mean, I, I think there's, I think even, you know, centipede hurts painting with, I think there's a lot of fans out there where this is their like Meriwether or something or mm, like, yeah. um, I, I mean, yeah, let yeah. us know if painting with is your favorite. We I mean, I know my buddy Colin, know. who you met Christian, he said, he said his favorite oh, animal that album is painting with. Yeah. Wow, and he, and he's like yeah. thirty five, and it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Um, does this uh does this song improve, uh, improve anyone's uh, feelings about the state of Florida? I think that was kind of part of Av's uh, aim or something. He he heard Florida getting trashed on the radio and was like, "Oh, Florida's cool, man." <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty funny. It's a pro Florida song. Fortunately, then old Ron DeSantis came along. Yeah, this is Ron DeSantis' yeah. campaign song now. <laughs> <laughs> um how funny would that be uh florida yeah interesting place i don't hate it it's fun to go there for vacation yeah also and, gets, they, and then florida gets weird man you know we like getting weird you know oh yeah for sure keep it weird i think they're like i think it is going to be weird because they're like radically altering the 
public education in that state right now to be yeah. like insane. Um, um, anyway, we talked about Florida. Dada. You want to, should we get into Hocus Pocus? I think this is one of the so- albums better uses of, of the Hawketing. Yeah. Uh, it is a little overwhelming, but I dig, I dig the melody. I, I dig that sample in the beginning. That's a, that's our very own cherry glazer. Uh, just K- in the KCRW. KCRW. Mm. Yeah. Who's yeah, a, what just a like daytime. No more. Also, there's an what indie it, band named after her, Cherry Glazer, with two R's. But um, what it, what is she doing? Like the traffic, and then she's like, "No more dinosaurs on the highway." Yeah, she something. was like just transitioning <laughs> yeah. like between from news story to news yeah. story. Like it was something about dinosaurs, and then she was like started to talk about traffic. <laughs> And yeah, I guess they heard oh, it. That, in she the actually car. said that they didn't like. No, she said it, that. Like, That's lifted that. straight. Yeah, ah, there's a uh, clever, yeah. clever. Here, this is this is a quote from clever. Brian. Uh, some people were like, "I don't understand what the dinosaur sample is." And that was kind of the point. The radio host was transitioning from talking about dinosaurs, maybe how much Jurassic World made, to talking about traffic. We we're listening to it going into the studio and heard it and thought, "Whoa!" We knew if we took that in isolation, it would be a funny thing. So we looked at the time on the clock and got to the studio, emailed our manager and said, uh, she said this sentence on KCRW at this time. Can you track it down? <laughs> so that's how they got it. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. My feet can't touch the parking lot. The parking lot is too damn hot, guys. I do like this one. Vertical. I do too. I think the back and forth is cool on this. It is super squelchy, digestive synth land again. But it's super catchy. Mm-hmm. Justin, what do you think of this track? Yeah, it's cool. I feel like this song really kind of... I feel like there's um, an L.A. beat scene kind of influence in this, like the whole low-end theory thing. Like the beat sounds like a Flying Lotus beat. Totally. I mean, or mm-hmm. all of the percussion on this album all sounds very like samplers, beat makers, like in the box, you know, like very crisp. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of actually like Vespertine, the, the Bjork album, which is her kind of like laptop beat album it's all very like crispy mm-hmm. kind of like micro beat production and yeah that's that's all over this album which is definitely different for them like you know i mean they use beats on Merryweather and stuff but uh yeah these are more even, straightforward it's more straightforward and most of like panda bear's percussion who's like you know he's the primary kind of percussionist in the band is a lot like more simple and like boomy and kind of earthy and not as like quick and sort of like yeah Apex twenty as as it is on some of these. Yeah. What do you think of that feet can't cross the parking lot line? I I'll admit the first time I heard it, I was a little bit like, man, that like that's the final draft we're going with there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what? A, like it's such a catchy moment in the song. Like if it was, I don't know. Maybe the fact that it's kind of quirky is what like makes it memorable and and kind of fun. It's I mean it's a universal think- feeling. Everyone knows what it's like to. Not want to cross the parking lot. I, th- I think. Uh, I think because of the fact that it's such a catchy moment is why I like it. Like I feel like if that line was like kind of yeah put could anywhere be else, it wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, but I, I do like that line. I, I like it in the chorus there, and uh, I think quirky is a good way to describe this whole album. Honestly, yeah, like just it just feels very quirky and fun. Yeah, definitely. All right, lying in the grass was one of the singles, which is kind of surprising. This is like we were talking about uh, that kind of like Aphex Twin or like LA beat scene percussion. That's really mm-hmm. prominent on this song. Um, I really like I really like the beat on this. Yeah, really love the beat mm-hmm. and that like that piano line. Yeah, it's like a, this is a pretty different palette for them. Like usually the the flute too. I think is a yeah pretty unique. Oh, is that yeah. a flute? It's, it's a, yeah, yeah, a little oh, yeah. like some kind of wind instrument. Yeah, that little like yeah. sampled line. Yeah, and then we get the hawketing. Yeah, comes in to just to destroy everything. <laughs> <laughs> this is where like where they're just like just kind of having fun because like the like like the sample in there of the guy going like oh uh, he eh, yeah uh, it's like. <laughs> They're just gonna throw that in there because they just want to throw that in there, you know. And that's those, like little moments like that is what I really appreciate about this album. Yeah, yeah, I like I like that part part of it too. Um, yeah, I feel like that's like geologist sneaking a little bit bit of his like personality in there. Mm-hmm. The burglars, huh? The burglars. The burglars. This one doesn't hit all the time. I'm gonna be honest. Really, it's fun, but it's 
It's not always it's not always the mood, I think. It's definitely not always the mood, but I really dig this one. This was like I didn't like it at first, I don't think. The very beginning is a little weird to me, but I feel like as it goes and builds, it really wins me over. Mm-hmm. Like by the time he's like singing in double time, I'm like, let's do this, dude. Like I'm pretty mm-hmm. I'm pretty in for the ride. It is crazy though. It is like maybe some of the most spastic uh moments on this this album. But uh yeah. But I think it's pretty sick. Like Dave is so good at like like we were talking about, we just talked about Fall Be Kind and like what would I want Sky? He's so good at like finding vocal pockets in these like different rhythms and like the the, mm-hmm. the the like craziness of this song hearing him like sing those crazy words over it i'm just like yeah i'm here for it i'm i love it i just remember like running in, in la to to this song and this, this album. is a good exercise um, album yeah for, for, yeah good, reasons yeah. good good yeah definitely especially when you steal shit and you're running away you know like when you're burgling <laughs> Yeah, when you're like stealing some shit and yeah, like cops are chasing you and this song is playing. <laughs> um, I don't even remember what natural selection is like. <laughs> yeah. How does that this one is, go? This, when, natural, when I'm listening to this album all the way through and natural selection comes on, this is where I'm a little bit like, all right, my, ho- my hawketing tolerance is reaching a critical mass a little bit. Yeah, I will admit a lot of the songs do kind of blend. Yeah. Like when you when you listen to it a lot, like from front to back. Yeah, for sure. And like 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 Noah said, like it's kinda of like the Ramones, right? It's like they're using the same kind of ingredients to make different versions of like the same meal, kind of in different ways. And yeah, I think when you do that, some will be like better and worse, but they maybe won't be as like distinct. Oh, this is the one that starts off like da 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 the past is sanct and part of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this song's ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty, it's also pretty uh, insane. I can kind of like, yeah, like Kyle said, I think it's sort of a, sometimes the vibe is not right for, for some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And this one is definitely intense in a way that oh. can you can kind of lock in with or that can sort of be a little off-putting. What are the best drugs to do this album? I feel like this is an amphetamines uppers album. I need to do more drugs to be able to answer that question. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, wouldn't that put you over the top if you're like tweaked out and you listen to this? Like, that's it's like you know, it could backfire. Yeah, audio meth plus actual meth. That'd do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe this is just like you know, uh, a vente latte at Starbucks album. You know. You just get real caffeinated and go for a run. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a venti blonde roast, a little something a little more kick to it. You know, it's, mm. it's, it's not a lot of cream in this music. You know, it's pretty. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty straight, no chaser. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of cream and coffee, uh, Dave Portner's grandpa invented bagels or something. Wow, nice bagels in Kiev. <laughs> I like this one. Same. This one's fun. This song mm-hmm. is about A.V. Tare's grandfather who came to America in 1910 from Kiev. His grandfather invented the bagel press, but sold the invention to a large company, which then spread bagels nationwide. Wow. Interesting. So A.V. Tare's a, a bagels, a bagel Nepo baby? Well, he's not. Uh, he should be, but his, his, his oh, grandpa he, fucked up and sold the rights. Sold it so, before. Oh. So, yeah. Dang. He could be the bagel. He could be the bagel king of Baltimore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if life had worked out differently, but yeah, on Instagram, Av said the following about his inspiration for the song: "Quote, my grandfather Lewis and his parents left a small village outside Kiev in the Ukraine and came to America in 1910. They came from a family of bakers and set up a bakery in New Jersey. My grandfather invented the bagel press, which shapes the bagels in a mechanical, practical way." But he needed what little money he could get for it and sold it very cheap to a larger company, which then spread the bagel nationwide. He also invented a device that makes the grooves in the tops of Kaiser rolls. <laughs> My dad has all the diagrams and blueprints for these devices. <laughs> wow. Fascinating. Bagels and Kiev is more or less about having a conversation with my grandfather's ghost and wondering what he would think of the world now, Portner continued. In many ways, the world is very sad to me. I wanted to write about having a past that exists and being connected to it, yet at the same time being estranged from that past. Bagels, guys. <laughs> yeah, I love bagels. I love Ukraine. 
it's not going so great over there right now. So, you know, it's been better. Yeah. It's a bummer. Um, I feel like it's cool that I feel like AV kind of shifted his songwriting, I guess like his lyrics on this album, I think a little bit more, not as kind of esoteric, you know? Yeah. They seem a little more lucid. Like, this is like a straightforward story about his, like about his family, you know? Right. You know? Yeah. Different tack than he normally takes. Our next one is On Delay, which I really dig. Yeah, this is one of my one of my favorites on here. Nice. What do you like about it, Justin? I like when Panda comes in. Um, it's cool where he's like a place that's frightened or whatever. Yeah, it kind of kind of reminds me of like like Meriwether, kind of a little bit, a little more looser. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely got got this galloping kind of. This has got like that galloping beat kind of a little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On delay. Yeah, I do dig this track a lot. I like the way it it builds from the intro to the verse to the the chorus. The way the the way the bass comes in is always super satisfying to me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I feel like this is one of the few songs that like has builds and takes a little bit time to build up a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The use of bass too on this album in general is is pretty nice. I mean, it is very much like a headphones album for all the reasons we've discussed, but for sure. They got the bass pretty dialed in. Yeah, so these next two are ones I revisit probably least on the album. Spilling Guts and Summing the Wretch. They're not bad. I think they're fine. Spilling Guts, the first line is take some time to waste a guy, which is pretty funny. <laughs> And uh, I like the end of Spilling Guts. I kind of wish they would have jammed out on that a while, but it's 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 kept pretty tight. In fact, it's just shy of two minutes. And yeah, Summing the Wretch kind of feels like Sisters with Spilling Guts to me. Mm-hmm. Kind of like more hawketing, more squelchy bass. But yeah, no, these two, for whatever reason, these two are a little bit interchangeable to me. Do you guys have any any thoughts or feelings about these two? They're definitely not highlights. They're not... Um... I don't think I'd skip any track on this record, but they're definitely not something that like stands out of like something that I would actively listen to on my own. I think this is a record that I like to throw on a lot, like with like exercising or like stuff that I when I'm not actively listening to it because it's uh oh. because it's so I guess one dimensional. It's kind of mm-hmm. easy to just kind of have on in the background. Yeah, and still enjoy it. Are you a place uh, albums through guy when you can or like? Are you like a? Oh, I only listen to albums for the most part. Nice, yeah. like vinyl, well, yeah. or you're just like being like a... straight through. Just straight through. I don't. Yeah. Ha- I I wish I would collect vinyl, but I don't. You're like the most unzoomer zoomer. Like your your favorite animal collective albums are the old <laughs> classics, and you listen to albums all the way through. It's like the only way to listen to an album. I agree. Yeah, you have to. as an old millennial, I agree. Hey, man, dude, the the kids are all right. <laughs> How do you feel about that term? As you as you as you can tell, we don't know any Zoomers. So we don't. <laughs> what do you think sums up the Zoomer mindset? Sums up the Zoomer mindset? I don't know. I don't mean I'm pretty out of touch with Zoomer culture as well. Like I don't know. Yeah. Like I'll like go on TikTok every now and then and like there'll be like some crazy trend that's going on that like I just don't even understand. Shit's crazy. So I'm pretty out of out of touch. Yeah. yeah. Justin, any any uh any thoughts on these two songs? I'm going to guess. I'm no, I'm guess. with you guys. I, yeah. I do think one of these songs are, a lot of these songs are um, much longer live and kind of more interesting. Yeah, let's talk but, about the live. Um, I mean, I didn't catch them on this tour, but it's I, I've seen a bunch of videos and it was cool to see, you know, they usually, you know, they do it in reverse, but this time they had to translate their studio creations for live performance. And, uh, yeah, I think some of the live stuff is cool. I mean, like, the hawketing is, like, really impressive live when you yeah, see him it do is. it. Especially for the guy doing, like, the upbeat part. Like, like I was watching videos. Dave's, like, playing keys and, like, doing the... It's pretty, pretty <laughs> nuts. Oh, <dude. laughs> crazy. That's crazy. Like, yeah, that is that is impressive. And I feel like it's almost like uh, they went with what the process over the result, kind of, or, like... 
they they kind of do what challenges them. So like to them, what was new is like the hawking and like you know playing quick songs, and it's not always the most interesting thing to the fan, but. It is impressive how they coordinate that stuff live, and they did get a drummer for this tour. I think it was the first time an, an outside member joined the band, Jeremy Hyman. Yeah, he's a Dan Deacon drummer, and he's drum for he drummed for like Ponytail back in the day. He's awesome. So the shows had a very like muscular, rolling kind of quality. I was tight and bummed that I missed this period but yeah from the videos and stuff i've seen the live drummer definitely helps like i mean there's no way panda bear could drum and do this insane like hawketing stuff and like they're all the the rest of the three guys are all you know like they got headphones on they're all kind of like isolated but yeah i think having the drums really helps helps like the live tracks kind of punch more golden gal speaking of live and speaking of golden gal uh i didn't realize that brian does the like vocoder sample on Golden Gal. He's like doing it and like playing the notes through like a... Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's kind of funny looking because he's like, you know, bearded and he's like... Why you what? Why you what? Like, <laughs> it's funny. If you look up the live, they do like a KCRW performance and you can see him really clearly doing it there. It's it's pretty interesting. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, as I said earlier, Golden Gal's... Like the rest of the singles, maybe not my fave, but but Kyle rides for it. I love this track. I don't know. I like uh, the sunny, poppy vibes of it. I feel like it's a it's a sound that like you don't really hear them play around with a whole lot, and I think they do it really well in this. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think too some of the manicness on like this one and like Florida da kind of does remind me of like strawberry jam energy a little bit like if i kind of view it through that lens i think it it like has more appeal to me but but yeah mm-hmm. i dig recycling the last track i think the melody is really tight and i think it kind of transcends like the hawketing palette like i think you could kind of play this on like piano or guitar and it would still it would still kind of slap but yeah interesting closer usually they have i don't know maybe like inward looking closers, maybe. I mean, this one has this one sort of. Uh, I feels feel like, like this that. one's inward looking. I feel like this is yeah. the one inward looking song, kind of. I, don't, I mean, or at least kind of, um, kind of sad, you know. True. Yeah. Yeah. So it maybe is fitting in that way. Kind of has that emotional tilt. It's hard to tell on this album, like what songs uh, an AV song and what songs a, a Panda Bear song. It is, yeah. I mean, they're, which is kind of cool. Like, I like those are some of my favorite stuff from Meriwether is like where they're both kind of up in each other's melodies. So, yeah, I, I dig that. But, yeah, it is, it is kind of crazy to me how much Hawketing is on this album. <laughs> like, I wonder if yeah. after touring it for a year, they were like, let's never do that again. Like, I think on the one hand, it's like, well, they haven't done an album where it's like one direct vocal style pretty much the whole way. I can get in. I can get into the Hawketing, but it is like it's if you don't like it, yeah, this you have no hope basically <laughs> with this album. It's, it's kind of like the the unique trait of this album for sure is the the Hawketing. Yeah, which again, I think when you see live is like is really pretty impressive and cool. But yeah, maybe it being a stu- studio creation first. Like imagine if they did tour these tracks first, and then when the album came out, people could like really have anticipated them. Like I wonder how how the response maybe. Maybe it would have changed. If you had to pick between Painting With or Spirit They've Gone, what would you pick? Oh, Spirit. Damn. Oh, okay. Interesting. I thought you'd I thought it'd be the opposite for you. I thought you didn't like Spirit. <laughs> no, I do like Spirit. Okay. It's, yeah, uh, I maybe misrepresented him, sorry, earlier. But okay. he, he said I think he avoided it for a while, but then when you, do, you I avoid yeah, yeah, I did avoid Spirit. Oh, okay. I I was kinda of scared of Spirit at first, <laughs> yeah. but then when I listened to it, I did very much enjoy it. How about time skips? Do you like do you like time skips or painting with? Ooh, I don't know because I feel like they're. It's hard to compare Animal Collective albums because I feel like they're. Yeah, especially those two. Wow. Each album is kind of set for a different type of mood. Yeah. That like, and they're all so different too. That the like Animal Collective is definitely like my Desert Island band, where it's like. If I could only listen to one band for the rest of my life, it'd be Animal Collective because each album offers something different. Yeah. So when you like ask me like what I like time skips or painting with, it's kind of hard for me to to choose because 
it's just based on different moods for me, I think. Yeah, it's tough. I might say painting with just because, or I would keep painting with just because time skiffs does have a companion and isn't it now sort of. So like Mm -hmm. you would still get some of that. Yeah. Where does this fall for you, Justin and their discography? Not very high. (laughs) Um, I mean, I've, but I've listened to it a lot. Like, you know, (laughs) yeah. Like I, I, like I said, there, there is no bad Animal Collective album. Yeah, um, right. It's just sometimes it's for you and sometimes it's not. How about you, Christian? Uh-huh. Yeah. Would I this listened- make would this make your your top ten? Top ten Animal Collective records? Might just. What about top five? Probably not. Yeah, no it's probably way. somewhere yeah. in that range. <laughs> would, Kyle, would it make top five for you? It might. Spirits wow. in your top five. You I mean, are right you now. Are centipedes, your one. So centipede feels Meriwether. Those are all up there. Yeah, sung tongs. I mean, honestly, I'd probably put painting with up there too. Wow, wow. But spirits got to be in there. It's right? fun. It's a very, <laughs> it's a very fun record. Yeah, I agree. I think it's good. It's definitely grown on me. I yeah, I think. I think Floridada made me a little scared and I was a little skittish and shy, but um, yeah, once I kind of found my way in, I, it really grew on me. Definitely, I think setting specific, as we've said, maybe more so than other, yeah. other records might be fair to say. Like, like this is maybe not the first record you would, first Animal Collective album you would give someone to like turn them on to the band. Definitely not. Although there are several that could be pretty, pretty strong dead ends, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> um, Right on, guys. Any other like cl- closing thoughts on on this record or or stuff in general, Kyle? Anything uh, anything you want to plug? I mean, your your Animal Collective content is great. We'll definitely send people your way. Yeah, I'd say just check out. I I do. I have a YouTube channel where I talk about music. So if you're into music, then check that out. I wouldn't really call myself a music critic because it's not like I'm reviewing albums. Like recent albums, I'd say I'm like I'm reviewing like kind of categories of albums. So mm-hmm. just check it out if you're interested. It's just look up Kyle Reed Music. You'll probably find me. And then, uh, I'm gonna be working on a lot of music next year. So if you're into listening to music, if you like sampling, then check out my stuff that's coming out. Bro, I love music, man. I'll definitely check Hell it yeah. out. <laughs> Sick. That's it for me. Nice. Right on. Well, thanks again for taking the time on uh, Sunday afternoon to chat. This was this was fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Painting with Animal Collective. Yeah, I'm glad we talked about this one. I was excited to talk about this one. Yeah, um, you seem you seem really thrilled. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm caffeine crashing. Yeah, Justin has a young baby boy son who keeping him up. Oh yeah. How's the little guy, huh? Uh, he's good. He loves Dance Manatee. It's his favorite Animal Collective <laughs> album. Yeah, <laughs> he goes right to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool, y'all. This was fun. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem. Man. I appreciate it. Sweet dudes. Cool. Till next time. Peace. See ya. Peace, Peace. y'all. Bye bye. Justin, if you've got anything else to say about this record, now is the time. I don't think we even mentioned this record came out in 2016, right? Yeah, February. I mean, this was interesting because, like we've talked about, maybe it seemed a little more jarring because there was no live material that you could kind of build up to if you yeah, wanted to. Yeah, it was all to. totally new. So this album kind of came out of nowhere more so mm-hmm. than other albums. They didn't workshop these songs. Um, yeah, in your face, not only aesthetically, but in terms of anticipation too, there really wasn't much other than the press preceding the album. Yeah, and this is kind of maybe the, the biggest critical hit the band took when, when this album came out. Uh, I feel like the critics did not dig it. But with fans, I think it's a different story, especially younger fans, like Christian said. 
Do you think they would have, um, like if Deacon was on board, they would have uh, kind of gone down this route for, for this era of songs? Like, I feel like it'd be cool to have like a, the full collective doing kind of an electronic beats album like this would, would be, would be cool. I don't think we've really gotten that. Um, I don't know. I was just thinking about that. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, obviously, you know, all of their music is a product of the people who are there making it. And certainly Deacon's presence would have had an effect on the second hand though. It doesn't, it, it feels like, you know, he's maybe not the most dominant, like creative musical force in the band. So it does seem like, you know, they would have been kind of in this zone, at least sonically. But yeah, interesting to think what his his involvement would have been. I also think on a previous episode, you asked an interesting question, which was like, what if Painting With was the album that followed up Meriwether as opposed to Centipede Hertz, which is uh, also an interesting kind of thought experiment. I think they both would critically kind of get slammed a bit. I mean, I always did kind of think of Painting With as like the Meriwether sequel even though they are not the same album. I mean, it's the same lineup. It's the same three guys. Yeah. It's very, they're both kind of beat driven. It's both kind of 50, 50, you know, AV and, and Panda, but mm, yeah. painting with painting with is a lot more to the point and there's not really any patience in, in the album. Like Meriwether is just this beautiful kind of unfurling. Yeah. Yeah. thing um but um so yeah i don't know i mean it's interesting it's certainly yeah i think the and this is out of the band's hands i think you know things are starting to shift in the music world the indie music world in terms of what what type of music was getting notoriety around 2012 so i think either way centipede or painting with i think they would have i mean you following up an album like meriwether i think either way they would have been kind of critically slammed Centipede, what Centipede and Painting With have in common is that they're both referred to as like abrasive, overstuffed. Yeah. I think the Pitchfork Review called it like epileptically like rhythmic or, or something. like a, a, a dog that won't stop jumping at your face or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And for people who got in through Meriwether, you know, I think maybe receive that as like, oh, they're dealing with their fame with like a, a sort of punk turn to like noise and uh, abrasiveness which may to some extent be true but also you know that's it's really for longer term fans of the band it's really a return to territory that they've been acquainted with in the past is is taking a more like maximalist kind of like in your face approach but yeah i think i think where painting with really differs from meriwether and where it differs from probably most of their albums is in the fact that it it isn't like a transportive immersive experience or like journey in the way that uh-huh. a lot of their other albums are like it's very immediate it's very direct and i think a lot of the maybe critical response is like it's very like when you listen to painting with it's very obvious what it is on its face and even though i think you can like all music the more you listen to it there's like more to discover and more to like appreciate and it has the potential to grow on you I think because it's so much less like, like you said, unfurling and like kind of like veiled and shrouded as other Animal Collective's albums are because it's so much like, here's what this is, you know, you know, immediately. I think people, I think some people could just felt like they could make their minds up really quickly. Like, oh yeah, Um, I know what this is and this isn't for me. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know, since you... I don't know if you had time to listen. I sent you some live jams because the band released two recordings of live shows from this era on Bandcamp. And those are fun. Yeah. There's like one version of Peacemaker that starts off so cool, like the build up. Yeah, it's really tight. It's kind of what's missing on the album. Totally, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's cool that it exists in those ways in the live recording. But yeah, especially hearing that version of Peacemaker, you're like, damn, like, I, yeah, like you could see this working on like a lot of different tracks from this from this era. But yeah, it seemed like just not to be what they were interested at the time, you know, for whatever reason. I think they were doing a lot of like, DJ sets leading up to this time too. I remember they were like just touring as DJs for 
a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? I know they, they did some shows out here. So maybe that had an influence on the kind of vibe of, of painting with, you know, kind of these beat driven songs. So, yeah, I don't know, man. Josh talked about the reception of painting with and how he didn't get it. And I feel like there's not a lot of that um, amongst the band, but Dave did say um, recently, I think it was in that thing he did with about various gear. He did it with some publication about what kind of gear he uses. He, he mentioned, he said that painting with was in his opinion, the most underrated animal collective album. So, Oh yeah. That synth history thing. Yeah. yeah I didn't notice that. I didn't know he said that in there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, um, that's interesting. He said underrated. The most underrated album in their catalog. Yeah. Yeah. I think well, we talk about this with Kyle too, but obviously Centipede Hertz in recent years has kind of been sort of reconsidered by like fans and critics alike. And I think sort of there's a similar case for, for painting with like, you know, the further away we get from its immediate release, it's being viewed more f- favorably by... Yeah, as we talked about with Kyle, like at least younger generations, younger people. One of the things I didn't really get about the comparisons to with Centipede Hertz is that they say these songs are like filled with everything possible. And it's like they are really busy, but well, it's kind of like feel, with the Ramones yeah. thing, like the palette is really limited. That's still. why, that's like, why it's like, yeah, I mean, I hear you because you could even say Meriwether like is stuffed with a lot of stuff. I mean, like totally. in the flowers, when, when, that, when that drop hits, it's just like so much, so dense and so much going on. So why now is it a bad thing? And I think that's, I think like we talked about the hocketing yeah, mm-hmm. and how you mentioned it's kind of a one note album, mm-hmm. but at least like the critics didn't really say that. Like the Pitchfork review just said that like, oh, there's too much going on. But like, it's like they, they correctly diagnosed that like, it's not the greatest animal collective album, but they didn't really nail down why, yeah. you know, and I think we try to nail down why. And I think it's just a matter of, you know, it's just a matter of taste. Like, you know, like you said, it's a little one note. There's a lot of hocketing and yeah, just some of maybe the production choices, like, you know, the sense, but also it's like, you know, it, it could be us and not the band, you know, music started shifting. I feel like around 2016 kind of away from the real dense maximalist trademark that I think the 2010s had. Right. And regardless of sort of like the reception amongst existing Animal Collective fans, this album also undoubtedly like brought a lot of new fans to the band. Yeah. Like you mentioned there, you know, the Spotify numbers for this record are, are pretty high. And yeah, I was, I was surprised, you know, Florida and Golden Gal are out there, out there doing work you know, spreading the good word of, of the band, you know, which which is interesting when you think of songs like that. It's like, you know, even if they're not for you, which I, I'm not the biggest fan of either of those tracks, but, you know, they are maybe, I guess you could say, serving their function in the in the ecosystem of modern streaming music culture. <laughs> one, one day maybe we'll get a um, really spaced out and, and deeply weird live version of Floridata, you know, Totally. Or something like that. Yeah. You know, that would be so cool. I feel like I've seen some people say like one of the reasons this album also feels disconnected from some other of their records is there's less of like an emotional heft. Like it feels more about like right. kind of like the fun of music and like catchiness. And like, you know, even in our conversation with Kyle, we didn't really talk about lyrics much or any of the emotional relationship we may have this yeah. album so maybe maybe there's something to that too like it connects with people on like a kind of musical direct sort of sugary uh sense like sensory way as opposed to like a more i don't know emotional it, relational way it, it's not that deep yeah i hear you it's like just like more so like kind of like dumb fun or just fun yeah my feet can't touch the parking lot <laughs> you know. but that's okay there's you know there's a purpose for that stuff too yeah, totally. Well, we've talked a bunch about why this album is, you know, controversial and what are some things we we dig about this album? I mean, it sounds great in headphones, like the the beats really mm-hmm. really slap ass as they say. Slap a jelly and ass. S- slap on a jelly ass and yeah, it's like a positive it's like a very positive kind of album, you know 
compared to like the like centipede hurts is a little darker times gifts is a little sadder you know Mm -hmm. yeah i'm definitely into i think like kind of the yeah the rhythm production on this and like i think this is a place i could see them going further in the future like kind of pushing their their beats in a more like apex twin direction like lying in the grass and stuff and you mentioned how like there's kind of like a low end theory like LA beat scene influence and yeah I think like the hawketing for as omnipresent as it is there's some songs where it's really sick and really works yeah I just think it's used too much maybe but like there I love yeah, yeah I, I do like that style it is yeah. cool. it is cool Last ep of the year. Last ep of 2023. Hope you guys get to scroll a little bit less around these holiday holidays. Scroll less, listen more (laughs) to music, to pods. Hit us up with voice memos, y'all. We want to collect a bunch of them. Yeah, I got to do a fan mail episode. Mailbag. Tell us about... Bonehead mailbag. Tell us about a moment that really really just hit your lower chakra when you were listening to Animal Collective, whether it's live or somewhere walking with your headphones on. Did you say lower chakra? Your lower, yeah, your lower right chakra. Where is that located? (laughs) I don't know. Your abdomen or something? I don't know. So there's a heart chakra too. I don't know. Sounds good. Thus ends the first year of our little podcast. Thanks for those of you who have been on the ride. Yeah, thanks for listening, y'all. We're on Instagram, of course, at Bonefish Pod. Check out our other our other apps. Oh, we've got interviews with members of the band and other musicians. Writers. Writers. Critics. Looking forward to another year of more music from the band in some form, individually or together. Yeah. Well, see you on the other side. See y'all. Bone Bone fit. Fit.